can I do this? So, it's always a great pleasure to be there. It's a wonderful place with a lot of friends. And this is a little bit the kind of follow-up of the talks I've made last year when we discussed about HTLV1 in uh, Melbourne, especially in Australian Aborigines. So um, I will focus my talk on epidemiology of HTLV1 and especially with a special focus of Central Africa, which is, as you may know, the largest endemic area for HTLV1. So two slides only, uh, what is HTLV1? So the first human oncological virus, which was discovered in 1980, uh, in the team of Bob Gallo. And uh, another important name is also uh, Takatsuki, who described the adult cell leukemia lymphoma, which is a disease from which HTLV1 was uh, described. So it's a retrovirus, as you know. There are several uh, hematology, several diseases associated. The main is adult cell leukemia, ATL, and there is also some neurological disease, infective dermatitis and myositis. The epidemiology is very peculiar, as you will see. The tropism is mainly CD4, but also CD8 and other cells. And uh, there is a complex for the cellular receptor with uh, HH HHPG, GLUT1, and uh, neuropilin 1. The two main diseases occur mainly in adults, which is adult T-cell leukemia. You can see, perhaps I can use that as a pointer, no? This one. You can see here the typical uh, adult cell leukemia flower cells and the tropical spastic paraparesis that we described a long time ago. These are the two main diseases in adults and in children. You find mainly infective dermatitis, especially in some highly endemic area. So what are the main uh, remaining unanswered questions regarding the epidemiology of these viruses? First. What is the real geographical distribution of HTLV1 and how many individuals are infected worldwide? So the minimal estimation is about five to 10 million HTLV1 infected carriers, but this is based, as you can see here, on only around 1.5 billion persons which originate from known endemic areas. And there's a lot of place where we don't really know the situation. That means that the current numbers is probably much higher. You can see here the distribution with the main area, Japan, more than one million of persons are infected. Central Africa, west, the western part of Central Africa with at least two to five millions of persons. Brazil with at least one million, the Caribbean and other places. It's important to understand that the prevalence can reach 20, 30 or more in adults, especially older than 50 years old. So what is going on in uh, Asia and Australomelanesia? We consider that at least, at least 1.5 million of people are infected, but as I just said before, for nearly 3 billion of persons like China, India, there is no really good data, despite the presence of a lot of series of sporadic or uh, series of adult T-cell leukemia or tsp ham So very probably there is quite a lot. The second uh, place is Africa with at least two to five millions of persons infected, but we know really nothing in North and all the Eastern part of Africa, uh, which is, as you know, highly populated, especially 100 million in Egypt, for example, or Ethiopia and other places. So we need absolutely very large survey in Africa. And there is now some nice story about Nigeria and also South Africa and also in India where people are really working in blood donors and bank to try to know the real prevalence. Concerning Europe, what is the origin of HTLV1 in Romania? As you may know, in Europe, individuals originating from IHTLV1 endemic era, like Caribbean, South America, and Africa, are quite frequent in UK, France, and Spain, but there is only one place which is really endemic, and nobody knows exactly why it is Romania. So about five years ago, the European Commission uh, requested the European CDC to construct a map indicating all the HTLV1 prevalence area in the world. And my unit was asked to respond to a request, which was a systematic review of scientific evidence on the prevalence of HTLV1 infection. 
This led to a kind of small book that we wrote by analyzing uh, nearly all the data regarding epidemiology in the world. And in Europe, only Romania is quite endemic with series of adult cell leukemia, series of disease, series of TSTM, and even in blood donors, there is something like 0.2%, which is quite high. So we are now collaborating, first uh, doing epidemiology, also uh, the genotyping of these viruses to look for a star effect, for example, and also to look on the population genetic to really try to decipher the origin of uh, this cluster. Now let's go back to Australia. What is the situation in Australian natives on Central uh, Australia? As Sharon said last year, after the meeting, and thanks very probably to the HTLV1 uh, topic in the meeting, there was quite a lot of uh, papers in the news and on the television and uh, also very nice uh, uh, correspondence, especially a uh, letter to WHO. Because uh, we know now that HTLV1 uh, infection is very high, especially in indigenous Australian, and we have done a very long-term collaboration with Lloyd Isadell. We have done a tremendous work. He's an MD infectious disease from Alice Spring. <coughs> and uh, we can demonstrate with him that HTLV1 was highly endemic. You can see here, if you have about 50 years old, there is about 40 to 50% of the person uh, who are infected. This can be in a court of the hospital, but also in the different small uh, village or uh, community. And within this population, highly endemic, there is also adult cell leukemia, infective dermatitis, bronchiectasis, and also TSP ham. And we have also the uh, opportunity, so just, no. It's very important to understand that such very high prevalence has been already reported in some very high endemic area for at least 20 to 40 years. So it is something which is quite peculiar to this virus. If you go, for example, to San Japan, with uh, Nancy Muller and a uh, Japanese colleague, you can see here that if you are 50 years old, you have about 50% of uh, probability to be infected. It is the same in this population. And if you go, for example, to French Guiana, where we uh, work quite a lot, there is about 40% of person <coughs> over 50 years old being positive. It's not so easy to understand the origin of this puzzling repartition are of an ethnic repartition which is associated with a very high level, but it's very probably linked to a founder effect in some group with the persistence of a high level of viral transmission rate. But it's important to understand that it could be the modes of uh, transmission and the relative proportion of each of them could be quite different in different population. Of course, in pygmies, in indigenous Australian, in South Japan, in the Noir Marron population of, uh, for example, in Brazil, in Mashhad, in Iran, in Tumaco, for example, in Colombia, and in Central Af Africa, it could be quite different. The second thing which is quite important to understand is that in Australia, and generally speaking in Oceania, or australo melanesian population, like in Papua New Guinea, in Solomon Island, in Vanuatu, in Australian Aborigin, the viruses present is a quite highly genetic variant, and we have demonstrated that when I was doing my PhD, my postdoc in Bob Gallo's lab a long time ago with Carlton Gashdusek. But after that, you know, we have done other studies, and especially in close collaboration with Australian colleagues, like with Lloyd, and also in other places. So we can demonstrate easily that the, uh, the population is here infected by a highly genetic variant with at least two or three different molecular variants in Australia dating back at least five to 15,000 years ago. Another problem regards the origin of the HTLV1. So what is the simian origin of the most commonly worldwide spread genotype, which is called the A. cosmopolitan? So HTLV1, as you know, originate from STLV1, which is found in apes and monkeys through interspecies transmission. If you find the virus in a human, it's called HTLV1. If it's found in a simian, it's called STLV1. But sometimes the virus are totally identical. We cannot make the difference if you give me a virus from, for example, uh, Gabon. I cannot know if it is from human or from a simian. 
you can see here the geographical distribution and all the uh, monkeys from the old world which can be infected. If you look now, this is a, a geographical distribution of the different genotypes which are uh, uh, related to the geography. There is quite a lot of uh, different uh, subtypes. And in, the cen in Central uh, Africa, you have a lot of non-human uh, primates with interspecies transmission from uh, simian to uh, human. And in all the other places, there have not been any uh, dissemination to the monkey. So a major question is, what about the interspecies transmission from simian HTLV-1 to human in Asia? As you know, in Asia, there is quite a lot of macaques infected by STLV-1, but there is not a single individual, at least up to now, infected by this kind of uh, viruses. And this is completely different to the situation in Africa, where you have exactly the same virus in the human and in the uh, monkey. And it is quite very strange because, for example, simian foamy viruses, also highly endemic in macaques, can very easily be transmitted in Asia, but not STLV1. Nobody knows why. And the major question, which is very important on public health, are the different modes of transmission of acquisition of HTLV1 similar on a quantitative point of view in the main IHTLV1 endemic area? And this is extremely important, aiming to decrease HTLV1 infection through public health actions. So HTLV1 transmission in human, mother-to-child transmission has been often considered as the most important mode of transmission in high endemic area. But if you look carefully at the literature, there are very few topics on that. And a recent paper in Japan demonstrates that sexual transmission between young adults is very important with around 4,000 new infection by year. And if you do that, for mother-to-child transmission, you will find less than 200. So the modes of acquisition of HTLV-1 in Central Africa, which is the largest endemic area in the world, could be quite different. At least in Central Africa, you can be infected to, to your mother by prolonged breastfeeding, to sexual activity, especially men to women, by transfusion. There is not a single country in Africa testing for HTLV-1 currently. Very probably South Africa will do that in the next few months, but they are balancing cost-benefit, which is awful. But that's my point of view. <laughs> Scarification and contact with, of course, fluid from non-human primates. And it is very interesting to understand that the contribution of this different transmission route could be quite different according to the different geographical areas. So we are working on this kind of thing. So the first study was done, was currently ongoing, was done in, in Cameroon, and we focus on a large population, about 5,000 person, either pygmies or bantus, and especially we focus on 300 individuals who reported direct contact, especially bites with animals. So these are uh, hunters who have been bitten by gorilla or a chimpanzee or small monkeys. So this led to the discovery of the HTLV-3, also to the demonstration that HTLV-4 can be transmitted from gorilla, and that also a severe bite from a non-human primate is a major risk factor for HTLV-1 infection. You can see here clearly that HTLV-1 infection was really associated with the severity of bite. We also dis described some the, transmission of very frequent uh, acquisition of simian foamy viruses uh, to a human. We characterize the virus and we also do a case control study demonstrating that there was some presence of uh, biological difference like uh, uh, anemia, uh, urea and others. So the second project which is ongoing in Gabon will try to quantify if of the different modes of transmission, and we are working now on nearly 12,000 person. First, general population, looking for heterosexual transmission, transfusion, hospitalization, contact with monkeys, scarification, in both population, bantus and pygmies. We also work on pregnant women and children, and we've just finished a study of on about uh, three to 4,000 blood donors. Just a few preliminary data. For example, in 2,000 individuals from different provinces, 
uh, using state-of-the-art Western blot and PCR, you can see that there is an increase with age, which is quite uh, always the time, and it's always either in women and it's always either in pygmies, especially related to a Fender effect, very probably a little bit like what is going on in Australia, and despite the fact there is no monkey, as you know, in Australia. Um, the distribution of HTLV1 is also quite heterogeneous uh, across the country. It's always like that. In most of the places for HTLV1, you can have a very high level of endemicity nearby places where uh, the level is quite low. And if you go, for example, this is Gabon. If you go to Cameroon or Central African Republic or uh, Zaire, uh, the DRC, the situation is quite different. So by doing a large epidemiologic analysis on this uh, um, 2,000 person, it's important to understand that uh, in the final multivariate analysis model, we find an increase in dependent risk in women, in elderly person, with history of multiple hospitalization and in pygmies, and of course, non-human primate bite, bite was also a risk factor. If you look now on the molecular epidemiology, there is quite a wide range of diversity of HTLV1's uh, genotype. We study nearly 200 strains. The majority were of the Central African B subtype, but there was also a little bit of diversity with the D and E and A genotype. And we also uh, performed the first complete sequence of the uh, viruses present in Africa uh, with the red star here, the HTLVB, the HTLVD, and the HTLV uh, F, which are the first one to be described uh, regarding this subtype. Just to show you that these viruses here are the viruses present in uh, Aborigine from Australia and the Vanuatu, which is quite different. So what is the take home matrix? First, the current geographical distribution of HTLV1 and the number of HTLV1 infected individuals in the world remain unknown, and we need really very large epidemiologic surveys in Africa and in Asia. There is ongoing studies in uh, India, and there is also ongoing studies in China, which will hope give uh, us, you know, in the next few years, uh, strong data. In Africa, the relative contribution of each of the different transmission routes remains quite unknown. Gabon is a very high endemic fossil with nearly 20, 30 percent of the general population infected. It can be acquired by different means, sexual, mother to child, hospitalization, contact. And there is a, a huge genetic variability of the viruses in Central Africa. Just one last slide. We don't know, which is quite incredible for a virus like that, what is the world burden of HTLV1-associated disease. <coughs> Except in Japan, where this is well known, the situation is quite not known for all the other countries. In Japan, you have about 1,000 of cases of adult cell leukemia each year. And as you know, this is one of the worst cancer. That means that all the persons are going to die within a year. So each year, you have the same amount of person dying that with the SARS for all the epidemic. That is going to be each year and also for quite a long time. There is no really treatment. The only treatment is uh, bone marrow transplantation in very few cases. For TSPM, there is about 50 cases a year, but as you are going to live with this disease for 30 years, there is at least two to 3,000 of persons living each year with this disease. The situation in the other HTLV endemic era is not really known for many reasons that I can list here. So we really need huge uh, studies which are absolutely necessary because of the huge underreporting of such disease. So just to finish, I'd like to thank some of the person who helped me quite a lot, especially in the network of the Pasteur Institute, uh, either uh, in uh, Paris, of course, with Arnaud Fontanet and few others, and also in the field, and uh, some different students that were very instrumental uh, to work on that. And currently, today and the day before, they are uh, currently working in the field. Thank you very much.